Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will take a look on the potentiometer. That's the symbol for the potentiometer, but obviously it will look differently in the reality. I have a bunch of pictures here of how it could look like in reality. There are a bunch of different types. Some you need a screwdriver for, others you can basically use your fingers and others you need to fix the value with a screw and a slider. Focusing on the green type here, because this one is a bit easier to explain, let's have a quick sketch here. This potentiometer basically consists of a tube and a wire running around this tube, a little bit like a coil. In the middle you have a pantograph, which is basically a kind of a slider that is out of metal and connects between the wire running around the tube and the other end of your circuit. So this pantograph or slider is basically dividing your whole tube and your wires into two sections. We have the lower section and the upper section and depending where you connect your circuit to, you will measure the red or the gray section. So let's assume the resistance of the whole potentiometer equals in total 1000 ohm. So in case the red section represents 50% of the length of this whole potentiometer of the whole tube, in this case, if we measure between those two points, our measurement device will show us 500 ohm as the value between those two measurement points. The reason for this is that our multimeter is measuring the resistance exactly between those two points, between the connection at the bottom and the slider in the middle. The clue with the potentiometer is that you can move this slider in the middle and so far access a different part of the potentiometer. So looking at the red area again, this one would represent now roughly 80% of the whole potentiometer. So if you measure again between the slider and the bottom connector, we would measure around 800 ohm. And that's already the major functionality of a potentiometer. Depending on where you move the slider or how much you screw in or out the screw, you will basically change the resistance of the potentiometer. The potentiometer itself is of course always having the same resistance, the same total resistance. But by moving the slider, we are accessing or measuring between only a certain part of the whole potentiometer and so for only measuring a certain percentage, a certain share of the overall resistance of the potentiometer. But of course, not every potentiometer looks like the green one. We also have other types like this one up here in the corner or this one down here. Those round shapes are more common than the linear ones so we want to take a look on those ones as well. Even though they look different on the outside the basic principle on the inside is the same because if we want to take a look on the inside we can already spot a scheme. It's again a wire running around a kind of a tube in this case even more a kind of a coil. So again visualizing the inner structure of the potentiometer in the round shape, we would have basically a ring and of course again a wire running around the gray ring visualized just here. In the middle we have again a flexible arm, so basically pretty similar to a clock. Let's assume once more that the total length of the potentiometer equals 1000 ohm and we are going to measure between those two points between the arm in the middle, between the slider in the middle and the left connector. So instead of the 1000 ohm, we are measuring this certain part of the potentiometer, which will equal roughly 30%. So again, our multimeter will show the value of 300 ohm. At this point, I want to add one more thing. In case you measure between the left and the right connector, you will obviously measure 1000 ohm no matter how much you turn on the slider in the middle. Because you're always measuring the whole length, the whole resistance of the potentiometer. Even though I'm sketching it here as it's left, right and middle, and the middle is the slider, in reality the connectors are not always wired this obviously. Sometimes it's the left and the right is the slider, or the right is the slider and the left is the other connector, it really depends. So you really need to take a look into the data sheet to figure it out or alternatively just try and measure the resistance while you're turning the slider in the middle and figure out which connectors are the right ones to actually get the benefit, get the feature of the potentiometer. 
In case you're not familiar how to measure resistance because you cannot measure resistance while your part is in a circuit, check out our short video about how to measure resistance. So to sum it up, it's always depending on the type of potentiometer you're using and the manufacturer, which connectors are the right ones to use. Check it out in the datasheet or check it out by measuring. In case you wonder why the third connector is wired to the outside of the potentiometer at all, that's because you get extra benefit based on this third connector. In case you introduce a second multimeter and you start measuring not just between the slider and the left connector, but also between the slider and the right connector, you can measure both values. Speaking of percentages, you could measure this part here between the slider and the left connector, which would again equal 30%, and you could measure at the same time between the slider and the right hand connector, which would equal 70%. So far, in case you measure with the first measurement device 300 ohm, you would always measure the remaining 700 ohm with the right hand multimeter. So by wiring up a potentiometer like this, you're automatically measuring always the anti-proportional value with the second multimeter. So if the first value goes up, the second value will go down by the exact same value. There are many use cases for circuits where this could come in handy. So keep it in mind, normally you're only using two of the three connectors, but you have the option to use the third one, which can be useful in some cases. So that's really all you need to know about potentiometers. Why do they have three connectors? How to use them? How they're working on the inside? So now you're well prepared to use potentiometers in your own circuits. So in case you liked the video, make sure to be subscribed for more content around electronics and IoT. Thanks for watching and see you next time.